Hello everyone, Bilderius 1.0 Alpha has been released. So let's see the public alpha and explore the user interface, the functionalities and how you can use them. Uh, Bilderius user interface is built uh, in order to uh, make it possible to do most if not all of the work not leaving the builder environment. We want to minimize the round tripping to the WordPress admin area and back and keep you in the builder within the flow uh, doing your work. So the top bar uh, presents uh, options that are going to be used uh, a lot, uh, so they are revealed to you and always accessible. Elements Inserter um, holds all the building blocks of the page, so page building blocks, right? If, if uh, in um, this panel you will have uh, options to access various templates and pages, in the elements area you are able to access page building blocks. Um, they're separated in different sections, uh, you can collapse them and uncollapse them, uh, you can set your own favorites that uh, you want easy access to, you can search for them, like collection for instance, um, it's all there for you. In the center of this um, uh, top bar there are responsive design controls. Um, which allow you to uh, first and foremost see your design um, in various breakpoints but also configure these breakpoints uh, to you know have different values assigned to them or create new ones if you wish to do so and lastly for instance to see the select tool in action and use and how it's useful uh, let's first open another template and for this, I'm going to choose single posts, which is a template that is assigned to uh, all posts on this website. Um, as you can see, when you open another template, um, it will open in a tab. Uh, the newly opened template will, um, uh, by default, uh, be pre-filled with the site header and site footer, which is also editable by you. You can edit them here or remove them from your page or template altogether. Once we are here, uh, I will simply add one element here, which is going to be the heading, and I'm going to center it, and maybe maybe add like five of them on the top, simply to separate it from the top. Going back to the content area, uh, I'm going to also make it page one since it's the main heading and I'm uh, going to pull dynamic data, uh, in this case post title. Dynamic data in Buildedius is coming from GraphQL, uh, which allows you to really control in very fine detail uh, what uh, dynamic data you want to pull and from where. Uh, however, in the free version and alpha version, uh, you can use only pre-made uh, template tags and in the pro you will be able to uh, construct your queries uh, to get anything you want. But uh, we cover most of most common uh, data sources that you might want to use in majority of websites. So right now we see the title coming from uh, the blog post Hello Mars. And this area here uh, allows us to change the source uh, for preview. Uh, so for instance, I can change this to hello world and I will, I will see the data coming from that post. Um, so this allows us to check our designs uh, that may apply to multiple posts or pages, uh, how they work with various pages uh, in one click. Next, we have a button that uh, removes uh, the sidebars to make space for your design, to view it uh, uh, with less distractions. And finally, uh, you can preview that on the front as well, uh, after, of course, you save your work. So I will click the preview now and see uh, what I did. Build Darius uh, has a unique feature in the builder um, niche. Uh, it has a built-in uh, staging and production branches. And by saving any work you do, um, you actually save in the development branch, which means that anyone visiting the live site will not see the work you did 
until you decide to publish. So for now, we are in the development branch and we see the hello world we added. But if I move to live version, uh, I'll actually not see any work uh, done on this template. Going back, back to development, should bring me back. Okay, so how do we publish? Uh, we go back to the builder, and after we've saved, uh, we can open, open this toggle and publish to live. If we now go back and choose the live site version, it's going to show our new work. So this is how we uh, let's say add elements, uh, preview them across different breakpoints, um, preview different data sources, uh, hide UI, see on the front, and finally save and publish. Then go back to our landing page. Um, on the right, we have a navigator. This is a very important panel. Uh, it allows you to access various building blocks of your website and a specific page. Currently, Navigator Elements tab is open, and this is the area that uh, represents, um, let's say it maps to what the HTML of the current uh, view is. This may be a page, this may be a template. Uh, we're going to see uh, this represented as a list of items. If we click on any of these items, uh, like this one here, uh, it's going to present us with the um, settings option uh, for these elements. Uh, in most uh, HTML-based elements, you're going to get more or less the same settings, unless there is a more kind of specific element. Uh, Maybe it's a collection for making loops, maybe it's a menu builder, then it's going to have a bit more kind of specific settings. But all of them are going to have HTML settings uh, within the content area. For instance, this section here, I might want to change to be, I don't know, the article, right? And I, I can do it straight away from here. I, it's not within some deep, deep nested uh, area, it's just here. I, mean, I may want to add an attribute, so like, I don't know, aria, uh, label and say this page section and now I have this attribute here. So um, this is how you manage your HTML uh, based settings. Um, additionally, you can uh, style using UI um, your CSS styles for this HTML element. When the HTML element itself uh, is being styled, it's going to say root on the top. However, you can also um, style via classes. So if I, this particular element has a class attached, and if I click the class, now everything that I'm doing here is going to apply the class of outer wrapper, not to the particular element itself. Um, and then additionally, um, you may prefer to do styling via UI or to a code editor. What is um, specifically different in this code editor compared to some other builders is that this is not a code block. So exactly the same styles uh, that are applied here are going to be, uh, let's say, translated into CSS. And vice versa, if I add a style here, it's going to uh, reflect in the UI. Okay. Uh, additionally, uh, you don't have to use um, classes only. You can uh, write any kind of selector that you want. So since we are now in this section, I may want to um, select this heading uh, and do something to it. So let's do that. Let's say a root. Then maybe we want to target um, a dot and then maybe h1. Of course, this selector is too specific and uh, doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, it's here to demonstrate add any kind of selector using the UI only. Okay, uh, this doesn't look so good, so let's just delete it. Next, selectors area. Uh, so if elements are HTML of the current view, 
Selectors are essentially global items, uh, global CSS selectors um, of various types. If you collapse this, you can see that we have element-based selectors, classes, attributes, and custom, which cover anything um, that doesn't fit these other types of selectors. By controlling this, uh, you affect um, styling for global um, elements that match the selectors. So let's hide the secondary buttons. So I'll select my button secondary, go to layout, and just click on none. And just like that, uh, our secondary buttons are gone. We can also create new ones, any kind of selector. So for instance, I can do dot nothing here and create new it's going to be selected and wait for us to style it and lastly css variables for those that don't know css variables are named values for css properties and this is a mouthful so what does it mean it means that you can name um, some styles um, uh, and then apply them to various places across the website and uh, once you do that you uh, know it's consistent um, and you know that there is a one place where you can change all of it so for instance let's say we want to change a color we can go to for instance this um, background I'll cut this out and just do something like uh, blue and save and suddenly the header and this area down there change their color. Of course, I don't want this because it also doesn't look that great. So I can easily bring it back. So both CSS variables and selectors uh, are primarily global, but we also have uh, template level overrides. So for instance, this nothing here class here uh, may have, uh, for instance, um, let's say maybe red globally, but on this particular template, it may be blue. Template will over, always override the global. We want to use global styles whenever we can, but if we want to override them on the template level, it's easy to do that. Okay, so this is a quick overview of our new um, user interface. Uh, and let's now skip, use the new build areas on the fresh install and build some stuff and see the workflow. So here we are, it's a fresh install. Uh, let's open posts to see some preparation I did. So we have some posts with some tags, sorry, categories. We have some photographs uh, uploaded as well as pages. Straight away, let's just go and edit this contact page with build areas. When you open up uh, a new page, a new post, a new template. It's going to look like this for you. It's going to give you a site header and a site footer, default ones. You can change them, remove them, do whatever you like, but they are here for you as a common use case. And so, um, yeah, we're now in a page. Um, and so let's start designing, right? I will uh, select my uh, page content to add some content inside. I'll start with a section. I want some centered content and so all of that. So I'm adding my section, choosing content container, and now inside I want I want to hold my shift key, click heading, and click a div. Heading is going to um, not be h2 but actually h1, and uh, I just want to center the thing. Uh, then I'm going to choose the div. And this is going to be my um, post content area. So what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to click on dynamic data here and just choose post content. It's going to fill in, not going to look great, uh, but that's easy to fix. So I'm going to go back to container, um, choose flex column where was I? I want to do my sizing and I'm going to say max width is going to be variable 
is going to be container container narrow and of course you don't know these names but if you go to CSS vars and choose your container and you can see your options here you can change the values and also uh, have more different tokens and uh, just like that it looks quite a bit better uh, let's just uh, use a custom selector uh, so let's say these um, items here yeah maybe let's change some spacing between them actually this div here I mean maybe we use a flex and then do it like that uh, with a gap we can do that but we can also just do uh, select the root then select the direct children and then use the asterisk to denote all direct children now that we have this side in that spacing and choose bottom margin of let's say vlm and we have just increased the spacing not saying this is the best way to do it uh, just showing how you can use how these kinds of selectors can be extremely useful in certain situations not having to go to the code element um, to do the work if we now um, check our different viewports we can also see um, that um, the typography is scaling because we use flexible typography here okay I'm going to save my work um, okay so actually uh, if we want to create the next thing and the next thing would be creating uh, a blog listing uh, or a blog page um, we actually need to make that template so I'll click on um, the templates link here uh, it's going to take me directly here in a new tab uh, and I'm going to uh, create a template that's assigned to a blog index page just to say something, uh, this area of the admin is going to get a new redesign as well. So we are now viewing the old one. So I'm going to call this just blog. Um, choose a regular template. And here I'm just going to say uh, blog posts index page. Give it a second and open a new template. Okay. So we want to make a simple blog grid, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this, choose my section, go to container. So I'm going to add, hold my shift key, click heading so I don't have to uh, open the inserter again. And I'm going to collapse all this and go to dynamic and open my collection. Okay. I can now pre-fill my collection with elements. So here I'm going to choose the article and finally heading image, paragraph, and let's use the button link. Okay, um, so I'm gonna come here now to the collection itself and choose my posts. Wait a second and I should get my posts. Here it's important to stress that the alpha, same as the future free version, cannot create custom queries you can only use the main query which, which works uh, on the blog index page and the archive pages like category archives and so on this is following kind of the standard wordpress approach where um, main query works on the specific uh, templates like this and uh, in our specific case it means that the free version of wildalis will enable you to create simple blogs and simple pages for free using just a free version however if you want to if you want more control which you normally do want for uh, like real clients you will need pro for that so uh, next uh, what we need to do is um, style this a little bit so i'm going to go to article and add this utility to it it's a simple card and in the collection itself i'm just going to add another one called grid and i'm just going to run this uh, collection to get all the styles visible sometimes when you're in a collection and you make some changes uh, you need to rerun the collection to make them um, visible okay so uh, these posts are listing and all of that is fine however we do not see the actual data so uh, i'm just going to actually move this image uh, to the top of the card 
and I'm going to use featured image here and uh, you get uh, various sizes so medium uh, again seems like I have to rerun this and second uh, I want my h2 elements to get the post title and uh, paragraph to get some post excerpt I don't see it it's somewhere here post excerpt oh no that's the wrong one. Okay, so loop item post excerpt, not from the current page. And finally, that button. Uh, I'm just going to say read more. And instead of this hashtag, I'm going to say post link so that we can open. Uh, this. Uh, I'm not going to do much more, but usually in these kinds of things, one needs like, a, let's say, one span, shift click, and one div. Okay, so the span is going to be used here to show the date of the post. Push this under the image. I'm gonna go back to collection and rerun it. So category links of the loop item. Okay. And uh, we have a grid of posts. Uh, of course, we could work much more on this. Uh, we can also preview whether it's responsive. Should be. Hopefully it is. Okay, those images, at least let's fix that. So I'm going to uh, do the layout block and sizing 100%. And that should be it. Okay, and finally, components. Components in BuildEd is free and alpha. You only get to work with built-in site header and site footer uh, components. Uh, but in Pro, you're going to be able to create as many as you like and configure them as, as, as in, in any way possible. But yeah, we have these now. So how do we approach and how do we work on components? Uh, let's right click on them and uh, edit component. This will open the component in the next tab in the context of the page. So it's going to look the same way. It's going to look like uh, when it's um, used. Component itself does not have any wrappers. So if it's a header and you want a header wrapper, you need to actually add the header wrapper into the component. Okay, and we can add something. And uh, interesting thing about the components is that they are global. They inherit. Um, from their main component definition and everywhere they're used, uh, it's updated. And this is not valid only for the CSS. This is also valid for any HTML elements inside of it. So uh, that's an interesting part, right? So let's add something uh, to this container here that we can um, use to see how uh, the components work. So I'm going to choose a container, I'm going to click elements, and um, yeah, maybe that's just going to be a simple text. Okay. Then um, I need to um, go to content, and instead of this content, I'm going to create a, kind of a property, right? And I can click here on this little plus button that uh, is available only when you're in a component. I'm going to create new. Uh, here I can define it. I can say label, like maybe, maybe not like this. Maybe I'll call it a header a label. And uh, here I can only say label. Okay. Um, and now that I did this, I can save. I can go back here and uh, I can actually use it. And so now this span element gets its content from uh, the properties of the component. 
We can have many more here. There can be images, text, link, and so on. Uh, so now that I did this, I'll save it. I'm going to move back to blog and uh, I can actually see um, that it's now visible, right? Uh, and if I now choose header, I should be able to change it. And so now my uh, component has uh, an item that can uh, say different things on different templates, pages, and so on. But it also has a fallback if you just want to not do anything in a certain place. Okay, so uh, extremely excited uh, to have presented you the uh, public alpha. Uh, we are looking forward to all the feedback and um, see you around.